Hey everyone, and welcome to another Gadget Talk. Wow, it's been a crazy week. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that's going on. We let's see, we had the Super Bowl this last weekend. We have the Olympics going on right now. I don't know if anybody's <laughs> watching it. I thought it was a pretty decent game. Did you get a chance to watch it? I haven't watched any football. I watched, I think, 15 minutes of a Seahawks game early on, and that's all I've watched in football this year. Yeah, the thing that I like, I didn't care about either one of the teams, and I'm sorry if anybody... I did watch the halftime show, actually. My wife called me uh, for the halftime show. Yeah, I, I I thought it was pretty decent. I like, I mean, I was looking at as a technical aspect of it, how they did everything there. It was really cool. Um, I didn't really care about either team, but I'm glad it was not a runaway game, so it made it more exciting. I felt great for those uh, people that bought ads in the later part of the game that people were actually still watching for them. So I was happy for them. So I was cheering on for them. So, <laughs> but, and I, I'm loving seeing this. So see, we got Darren here from uh, Australia in here. And Hey Darren, that was a really did cool. You see I like his new video I, he has out? Yes, I did. He said, yeah, I saw that. That's really good. It looks really good. Uh, we will maybe not probably. Well, not today, fine. I was but... just going to log on to find his channel to see if we can share it. Uh, Okay, if we can, I may be able to pull, yeah, either you or me, we can pull up that up here in a little bit. I got we also are joined here by Chad Tarkashis here. Tom, of course, is on here. Um, yes, Tom was telling us about somebody that got hurt really bad today, caching. So be careful when you're out there caching. Uh, be real careful, especially if you're caching alone. You never know what's going to happen. Uh, we got Mini Mag on here. Um, we are live now. Yes. And let's see here. Andrew's on. You're going to be close to in, 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 Andrew this next week. Bell on the move. So that's that's awesome. Um, Adi, what time zone are you in? Central, isn't he? <laughs> I know, but he's saying morning. Oh. To where we're at right now, it's evening. So unless you're talking to our friends unless that are down under like Oz Fox. I mean, come on. We're So we're here and there and and of course, we got Roma Cats. Hey, we need to send you a message tonight, Doug. We got to talk to you. Um, and then also, let's see here. Scooby loves Pooh's on with us again this tonight. GCDX K11, Engineer 42, Centrish. He's in Centrish. Uh, Audi yep. is. Yeah, I, I know. Yeah, I was like, you're in Kansas. I know what time it is there. <laughs> what do you mean morning? All right. And then we also have the MacGyver. Uh, and Flo joining us here from California. So we have a great group of fellow cashers in with us tonight, and we really do appreciate you. But you know who else we appreciate, Chad? Yeah, our uh, so I want to say patrons, which we do. We, we do. Well, our definitely sponsors. Our sponsors, but we do appreciate our patrons. And there's a lot of good stuff. So we're going to go ahead and uh, jump over here for um, our, our sponsors. And then I have some special announcements about Cash Fest that you don't want to miss. So yeah. here we go. If you have not become a patron of the Geocache Talk Network, what are you waiting for? Patron levels start as low as a bison tube level at $3 a month. To sign up is easy. Simply go to the Geocache Talk website and click on the Become a Patron button or go to patreon.com forward slash geocache talk. Patrons now get the famous blackout coin, invites to special events, and other really great items throughout the year. Become a patron today. Logwork, the creators of the fantastic logbook made with genuine right in the rain paper. The logbook's designed for the micro containers of the present and future, geared towards the hider who'd rather go caching than doing cache maintenance. Find them at logwork.com. That's L O G W E R K.com. Have you subscribed to FTF Magazine yet? FTF Magazine is the number one geocaching magazine available. It is a quarterly magazine that you can be part of. Submit your geocaching milestones and adventures to be published. FTF Magazine is also interactive with puzzles to solve and the hunt to find Spartacus. If you can solve the puzzle or find Spartacus, then you will be entered in to win a special path tag. Every new subscription, you will receive a special swag pack. Subscribing is easy. Just visit FTF's website, ftfgeo.com. Don't miss out and subscribe today. All right, so... I hope you have you been following all the stuff that's been going on with Cash Fest this last week. I mean, there's been some really big changes. Have you seen all the changes, Chad? I've seen them. Yeah, uh, yeah. they're exciting. I actually think it's they good. are exciting. A lot more side events have been published. Right now, we have three community celebrations. We have uh, one at 
the place here called the main event. Then we have the one at, uh, of course, the escape room here, which, remember, if you're going to the escape room and you want to do the escape challenge, you need to go and register on our website for that. Use the link. Um, we only have we had only have 150 slots, but we already have, as of right before the show, 72 slots are gone. So we're almost halfway full of that. And remember, this is those that is actually a 10 minute challenge. You're not going to get the experience of doing a whole room. Um, as much as I we'd love for you to be able to do that whole room, there's no way we could get 150 people through in three hours. So that's why it's a 10 minute challenge. Um, so that that'll be how that's going to work out. Also, another another side event is that the concert has been published, and that is also another uh, community celebration event. Um, and that's there that night at, at Shelby Farms. Um, there, there's a couple more events that we are working on publishing. We're waiting on a couple of uh, things, and I will tell you this: there is one more community celebration, and I don't have I spilled the beans saying that's coming, but we're just waiting on it for it to come through. Uh, but we will have another community celebration. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and we also have a CEDO that's going to be here, and we're just getting the final where it's going to be. So that's so there's a couple more, about two or three more events that are going to be published at least for that week. So a lot of stuff. And oh, I, was so to ready, right? this. I was hoping to be able to announce this tonight uh, completely of where our host hotel and how you could get into it but we haven't gotten the link yet for it. But hopefully by Sunday, uh, for Gary, I'll let him spill the beans on that one. Um, I'm, I won't pull a Gary on it, but we should hopefully have the host hotel um, all linked up for you to get um, here in Memphis. And let me tell you, you're going to want to stay at the host hotel. There's going to be some extra perk. There's going to be an extra prize, if possibly, that you could win. And um, it's a really great rate. And you're not going to be able to find this rate anywhere else for this price. So you're going to want to stay at the host hotel and we'll have some other great rates um, besides other hotels, but we're going to be releasing the host hotel first uh, because we want people to stay there. All right. Taking care of the news. So <laughs> <laughs> the important part, important stuff, the important part. So now Chad, we were kind of talking, I've been looking forward to this one because I've seen how you do the electronics in this cache, I think it's going to be really cool. And last week we went in and showed some of the, how the CNC cut the machine, how to cut the door and went through a lot of the different parts and elements that you're adding to it to just to really jazz it up and make it look authentic. And tonight we're adding the electronics to it, but so I'm going to turn this on over to you and go ahead and show us how we're going to be doing this. Well, so I would just want to talk about mounting electronics pretty much, not necessarily the ones for this cache, okay. um, but they're going to be on how to mount them the way I like to mount electronics. Now, there's all kinds of ways that I mount them. Um, this is the way, this is the what uh, method I'm planning on using for uh, this cache here. Um, okay. And so uh, I like to mount stuff if I can with rails. So these are all rail mount systems. Sorry, my kind of mess over here. Um, or most of what I'm talking about is a rail mount system. <laughs> um, and uh, one thing is uh, we're going to be using our Arduino. Uh, and I'm planning on using a Nano uh, or a uh, Uno for this cache. Um, they should have the same amount of ins and outs, inputs, outputs. Uh, I might end up using a Mega, depending on how many LEDs uh, I want to use. I might use the Mega myself just to get more of the lights on it. But right. um, I think we'll share the code for the, the Uno or the Nano. Um, so first thing is, is uh, a rail mount uh, Arduino uh, board here. So what it looks like is this right here. So one thing I like about these is you mount your Arduino. And this is actually made for a uh, a Nano. Right. Okay. Yeah. Or... or uh, uh, a nano or a mini micro. Okay. So there's two different here. Uh, here I got it on the build cam. Right there you here. go. Yeah, there we go. That's better. Um, anyways, you can see the two different placements on them for the micro, the nano, kind of the spots. Sorry, it's not focusing very well, but there we go. Anyway, so you just follow which one that it goes into. Of course, check your uh, 
your outputs there and make sure they all match up. Um, so VIN is this way. So this would go over here, two down. So it just pops in. And then if you have any issues with it, you pop it out and it's good to go. Um, and then all your, your pins here that you have on the side. Oh, right there on the screw terminals the camera there. Is, yeah, uh, they're all on your screw terminals as well. I wonder why my camera is not wanting to focus. It's okay. Yeah, we're picking it up. We're It's seen. All right. <laughs> so anyways, there's the, uh, they're all listed on here. And then also they're terminal, screw terminals. So then you just use your screws to put them in there. And you don't have to worry about any soldering uh, with them. So uh, that's nice. And the thing about being a rail mount is you see the back of this. It just sits right. here and it just clips on the railing. So you'll mount oh, this wow. to wherever you want. And that pops on, snaps on, and it's good to go. Now, rail mounts, you can you can get um, all kinds of attachments for it. So you can actually get uh, AC attachments. You can get 12-volt, 24-volt um, DC attachments that will transform it over. You can get relays, all kinds of stuff for your, your rail mount. If you just Google rail mount uh, and what you want, it, it will be – you can find them on Amazon. Um, there's so much stuff, Raspberry Pi mounts, everything. So – um anyway so my board will be here now if i wanted to run wires to there and then out a couple things you could do is you have these here that you have an in and an out right for your wiring so if i wanted to either have a, a separate area so a lot of wires go in and then i can rewire everything out so i just label the ends of these these do the same thing so these all come apart um so these are just terminal blocks here um okay. So they will pop together if you want. And you can pop as many together as you want. But these just pop on in the railing here. And you snap them all together. Um, there's N blocks here um, that actually tight, keep it tight. Um, otherwise, you could slide it right off of the rail. But if you screw this down, um, it'll tighten up. You also have end pieces. So if you look at this side here, you don't want anything to touch that, right? And short right. circuit short out so there's actually an end piece here that will go on here as well uh, and this side doesn't have that so you don't necessarily need one on this side just the one side and then you yeah, put as many of these on as you want yeah and that's there's a really great ones. way of doing that um and i just dropped in a, the link amazon link uh, affiliate link for the nano um screw mount so that's i just dropped that into the link and we just, like I said, then you can just go and look at rail mounts. I can't, you have so many different variations there. I couldn't put them all on there. Um, now, I will mention they're not the cheapest. <laughs> no, no. Just to give they're... you an idea, that nano rail mount on Amazon is $31. So just, just to let you know. So don't get I don't know if shot. I paid that much for it, but I think I was more like 24 Right. I mean, it could be. I mean, right. I'll, I'll continue looking. You guys have to shop around, but yes, price. 24 is still really expensive for a mount. Um, but the way it's made, the convenience of it, um, you know, being able to terminal screws, all that stuff, it's actually really nice to have. Yeah, that is. That um, is really nice. Um, I really do like that. That's really cool. I'm sitting here thinking, as you're doing that, wow, I wish I would have had that for one of my smart caches when I – how I did all the board off coming off the nano and mounting the lights and LEDs and bringing all that kind of stuff. And I still had to use a, a PCB, but I think that that's another great way of doing it. So, yeah, I really enjoy using these. Um, uh, anyway, so once you get these together now, uh, if you need to run more power or ground multiple on here, um, you still can without you can either do it the old fashioned way and run a wire between them all um, to make it work kind of sort of like this. Um, right. So right. then anything out of here will be the same or you can get these here. Um, these come in all different sizes. I just happen to have some threes, twos and fives with me. But if you wanted three of them to be power, um, all you have to do, and they actually do break apart um, if you look at them. Um, you just stick this on the three you want in here. 
just. <laughs> Ooh, I just found one. Okay, I'm gonna drop another one of those in in there. This one's actually a lot cheaper. Um, and sometimes on these, cheaper is not necessarily always better. But if you want to try it, um, I've got another one dropping in one of those uh, nanos. This one is uh, $18, $17.90. So you can try this one as well um, if you want to. So there, you got two different options there. One's $31 and one's $18. So, but that just gives you a little bit of variation on those. Um, I'm looking, still looking for some of your other ones that you got going there, Chad. Um, mm -hmm. so by, by using these here, we just tied all three of these together. Uh, so you could have your power go in and then have multiple things go out. Right. So if you wanted that one thing, if you wanted something to flash, you can have the one go in and then have it go out to three other things, uh, which is a little bit better. You could probably take wire and put them together and stick them in one hole, which doesn't work that great. Um, but, uh, this makes it a little bit easier. Uh, and then just like you know, the terminal blocks, that's what these are. You just have to screw these to tighten them down. Right. So, okay. It's actually and pretty then, nice. Yep. And also I'm dropping in right now is also the actual rail that you're using. So that's coming. Oh, yeah. So the metal rail, that is the link that you are seeing that's just populated right now. So, and, and I'm looking for your terminal mounts. Is that what you called them? Terminal the rail mount? Yeah. The okay. terminal blocks? Yeah, I mean, you have to look for the proper name. I'm I'm sure I'm not using the exact terminology for them. I don't use them every day, so. Okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, anyway. Um, so that's one way to make your electronics. And there's, so you know that the cache, uh, Superheroes in Jeopardy. Right. Um, so it actually is all done by a rail, a rail system. Uh, it actually has uh, a breaker in it that is rail mount that is actually line voltage. Uh, it has a relay in it that's a rail mount. I should I should take a picture of it sometime and, and show it to everybody. It actually has a lot of different things on it, um, a couple different controllers, all that stuff. So um, it's actually a really really cool system, and I don't ever have any issues with it. So okay, I think I found some that are similar to what you have, and they are assembly kit. It's a 10 gang with jumpers, den rail, terminal blocks. Is there is, called. so Roomba Cats here, uh, let me pull that up, was asking, and he wonders if there's a Thingiverse rail mount available. There is, actually. Thingiverse has a lot of rail mount stuff that you can actually print. Um, and uh, I don't know if I can share a screen, but uh, I could look it up real quick and see something real quick. Okay. Let's see if I can find one Wait. real quick here. Sorry, I'm typing at the same time, making sure that I will be able to put all this back into the, um, not necessarily the show notes. The way we kind of do our notes, I mean, we drop them in here, but if you, after the show, after we're done, um, I will have all the links as well in the description on YouTube. So if you're watching on Facebook or you're watching somewhere else, go check out the Geocache Talk Network uh, YouTube channel and go to Gadget Talk, and you'll be able to see all these links if you miss them, if you're missing them in the chat. A lot of times you can pop up the live chat, and you may be able to see the links as well, but you won't necessarily know what they are. So, But they will be in the description down below um, in the description on youtube so just give you that and these are affiliate links for amazon so anything that you get on there it does help the channel so just want to uh, thank you for that just to let you know what the what that goes to it's no extra cost to you it's just that we get just a little bit back on it okay do you want to go ahead and show that chad so here's an arduino rail mount system here uh and so you just 3d print these and they, they mount right to your rail so um and you know honestly they're they're not anything special um, pretty simple, but that's just an example of uh, one that they have. On right. There. There's lots of different things on here. Right. I like the one that you're showing here because it has the screw terminals in it. Because it's almost because the nanos are can be a kind of a pain, and that's basically taking the the way the uh, PCB out on it. You see, you're using your proto board. It's actually what that ends up being is what it looks like. So I think that's really really great 
Yeah, and, and you, yeah, you can make a common ground uh, on there. So uh, that's another thing I was going to show a different style that I use a lot of, and that is what I'll probably end up using on part of this cache. Um, is better quit looking at thing of I get addicted to that thing. Yeah, it, <laughs> it, that's one rabbit hole you can go down really yeah. quick. Is on thing of all day in long. Fact, in fact, right now upstairs, and I can see if I can pull it up, but I am printing um, part of Owen's the the big huge um, 3D maze. Um, printing that right now. That is the quick. Um, reset. So instead of having to go back and do the maze all the way back through, you, it'll drop straight down and, and it locks back into place and it's right there. So I'm printing that right now. A and good I'll see way to I reset. Go. A fast it way is. to reset is always it important. It is a fast way because I have one of the other ones and it, it's just about as puzzling to put it back together as it is to take it apart. So here's some more types of terminals that I use a lot of. Um, come in several different sizes. Um... And uh, the way these work is it actually has a plastic cover on it, so you can't short anything out uh, or cross anything over. Um, the cover does pop off of there, and then you can get to the screw heads. Uh, if you need a bunch of grounds, you could actually run one ground in there, and then these come in all different sizes as well. I think I just grabbed these few. Uh, and you can actually pop them off too, but then you can just actually add them. If I could get it. Anyways, these fit in here. If I've unscrewed it. Oh, I haven't unscrewed it. But anyways, they'll fit in here so you can, uh, or in, inside the one side, and they come in both your hot and your, your uh, ground, um, or power and ground. So um, you can do the same thing, right? Have one power in, this will connect them all, and then right. have the outs. Okay. Full ground. So, um, if you look at a lot of my older caches, I right. use a lot of these uh, okay. in those. So, anyway, you kind of get the point, the picture of it. Um, and then, uh, <laughs> uh Romacast gadget cache rule number three automatic or easy reset. Yeah. Yep, very much um, so. All mine are easy. Well, I have one that's not and i have people that don't reset it all the way it doesn't ruin the surprise because it's not like a puzzle in it it's something that you have to do to find it it's not attached to the box at all right um but people will reset it halfway sometimes <laughs> so but anyway so here i'm gonna, okay. I'm gonna uh, share this real, hey chad i'm gonna share this real quick so everybody can see it let me get the chrome tab right um okay so just so that you can see it. Yeah, I know my camera's on at an angle right now, but there it is printing. It's got about, I think about 15 more hours to go on that part. This one's, this is taken quite a bit, and this is actually a lot faster going through Prusa than it would be for the other, but that's the outside housing of, of it printing right now. And it's been going for, I'm going to say, serious. About seven hours already. It was like it's a 21 hour print, is what it is. So, but there it is. There's it printing. So, just kind of, and I don't have the other pieces down here, but, but there you go. So, but easy reset. And that's something that's really key. I think this will be cool. This one will fit in an ammo can. So, that's just a little side note there on easy reset. Yes. Um, Engineer 42 was talking about there's many uh, of the printable Arduino mounts. Um, there are that don't require uh, uh, the DIN rail. The, the rail, yeah. Um, I actually have printed several of them uh, myself. Uh, see if I can find them. Or a couple. Now, <clears throat> if you don't want to use a rail mount, I think we've shared this one before, but you want terminals. Wrong one. Where are you it's going? Okay. Oh, oh, and over here. Okay, here. right here. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so uh, these have the, the terminal blocks in them. Uh, the quick, the easy uh, attachment for the Arduino. Um, right, I, I use these a, a lot those. too because they're nice and small. Um, and then your battery, uh, however you want to power it. 
so these are nice to use. I use a lot of those in smaller, um, uh, you know, uh, caches. Um, right. There's also, I printed these ones here that you screw down to something and then your Arduino fits in, snaps in this way. And then you just use your pins going out. Um, I printed it. I've not used it. And then here's one that's just a little bit bigger, same style. Um, I don't think I have printed any of the Nano ones. Uh, or the, I mean, the Uno. I don't use Uno very often. No, um, but I've also <laughs> printed screen mounts. So it would sit on top of something you'd see inside. Um, I've not used this because I can't figure out how you'd get to that screw way back in there. Uh, oh. And then I, I believe the I2C doesn't fit in here either. Um, let's see, I have an I2C screen in here. So, but it's just, you know, you have to learn learning curve of, of doing these and modifying them. I guess the I2C does fit. Um, and I guess it would probably be fine with just these two screws in there. Because it's not really going to go anywhere in the no, back. No, no, it's touching. not. So I guess the two screws would be just fine. So anyway, it's just some of the fun stuff. And this sits up at an angle so you can see it. One of the issues with the with the screens is when they're sitting flat and you're trying to do your puzzle. It's so hard to see them It is hard to see them. Yeah. It really is. So anyways, I've printed a few of those. Um, you know, whatever. Uh, the uh, one thing I was going to say about these, these ones here is I like using them because they fit inside these boxes really easy. Uh, the waterproof or weather tight boxes. Yeah, I thought about drilling a hole in the back. Yeah, that's what I was just about to say. Doug is saying, yeah, fill, uh, there we go. Doug is saying, drill a hole in the back and fill the hole. Um, yeah, that's that's a really great. great so I did that once before. One or uh, one of the nice things about these two, and I don't know if it does with this. My no, they actually have attachments already in there for your boards, typically. Uh, there's usually different size, but this one doesn't actually fit, so you'd have to do your own in there. But uh, anyways, that's the nice thing. Also, um, you know, uh, double gang electrical boxes. You can get the watertight ones with a with a uh, blank cover that uh, you put your uh, that will fit inside of. Okay. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you drill the hole in the back of that. Um, you could just go back and fill it uh, uh, with a 3D pen. So you just put your filament in, and you could actually just go in the back of the hole and actually fill it in, and it would have the sand it, and it'd be the same. I don't know if you'd have to sand it. So, anyway, almost like a 3D printer. Yeah. Same thing if you have a steady hand, I guess. Right. And then, I mean, have you ever tried, as I'm looking at this, um, I, DAP makes it. It's DAP Platinum that will work on PVC. Have you ever tried that on anything? No. Okay. No. I have some coming, yeah. so I'll let you know. <laughs> okay. See how it works. Yeah. I got a couple of holes I want. I need to fill on a couple of caches, and it says it's for, you can do PVC, and it comes in white. So I'm hoping I can sand it down and fill that hole and then put it back over, and it'll be fine. Um, if anybody has used the DAP uh, Platinum uh, for PVC and everything, all that, it's an extreme, uh, let me know in the chat. I'd really like to know what your thoughts are for it. Because um, that's, I'm since I'm building so many caches now out of PVC board, that I think that's a really, really great way of possibly doing it. So just want to be able to fill these holes and then I can paint over it and do whatever I need to. Um, so, I, yeah, as you can see, there's two, two new boards of PVC board over here that I got today um, that I'll be using nice. this Saturday. So <laughs> I'll get them cut nice. up. Sounds like a fun it, Saturday. It will be. It's going to be a messy set. Well, that part won't be. Um, I'll be pre-sawing the birdhouse there. Oops, sorry. Spilled the beans. Um, but yeah, I, it's, uh, it's going to be doing some um, a birdhouse out of another PVC, but I have a kind of a neat puzzle that I think I I was inspired by some of the ones that I've been doing recently of how to do something. And we're going to do this without drawing it out. So there's, there's, cause it's, I've, it's 
it's just dimensions. I don't need to really draw this one out to be able to put it in there. It's just going to be quite a bit of measuring. So, uh, uh, Doug mentioned here uh, the Vetco box uh, deal. Uh, I don't know if it's the same thing. Um, we have a Vetco here in Bellevue uh, that was one of is one of my favorite electronic stores. Uh, if you can't find it there, probably isn't around. Uh, they also right. sell a lot of used stuff, so I would get a lot of used fun equipment from there. Um, if you ever go to a surplus place uh, or find one or see one, um, you know, you should stop in because you can get stuff uh, dirt cheap. I mean, if you're doing um, this was like $2 there. Um, now, this might have been from it was two ninety five from Boeing. This is actually from Boeing surplus. Um, so this was a test thing, but all you have to do is wire it in the back. So you have to put you these the leads in or the connectors. The wires at the same uh, in a certain order for certain connections, right? Um, to complete the circuit, uh, let's see, I think I have some here. So they look like this, and you just have to put them in, right? You see these on escape room games, um, yeah. Anyways, it came with an aluminum box, everything. It was, uh, uh, I don't know if you can see it, it was $2.95. Um, good place to go. I have. Uh, for ten dollars, I got uh, some. I got this amazing box over that's watertight. Um, it's an electronic bo or a box I use for a, a scanning game. Um, right. If I have a chance, I can show it to you guys. But uh, if you have a chance to or find a store like that, stop by and see what they have. Okay. Um, Doug is mentioning here, um, and I'm, he says he uses super glue and baking soda as a filler. Um, a lot of times. So that's another option. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try the PVC, this, uh, the depth uh, platinum, see what I can do on that, see if that works. And I'll, I'll, I'll let you guys know as I'm working with it. I'll let you know if it, how it works because um, I'm always wanting to try a new product, um, see if it will work the way I want it to. Um, oh, I just went out of focus. Let's see if I can get it. Go there we go. Um, but yeah, so I'm trying to see if that'll work. Um, but like I said, Doug uses super glue and baking soda as a filler. I had never heard that. Um, so, and I see Chad is bringing into the background that you're going to want to see the project that we've been working on. Um, he's yeah. He's I wanted to go over electronics real quick. Uh, some mounting. I actually didn't know how far, cause it's been a busy week. Um, how far I'd get on this project. So, um, <laughs> just find our ways that he, he, uh, I learned to avoid boring surplus unless I have an empty truck. Way too many possibilities. Absolutely true. I mean, it's <laughs> I I love surplus in stores. So, anyways, um, so I did get to it. I actually did some videos on making the cash or painting it. Um, so uh uh, anyways, this is a little bit further along on the door. So I actually ended up painting the door itself. Um, and uh a little bit more of the frame. Let's see if I can get it up here. Um, I actually don't like. So let's see if I can pull up a photo. Um, sorry, here, Derek Lamina. No, you're okay. I'm looking. Let me for, go over to this I'm screen here. Of this photo of the me. door. I'm actually looking to see if I have one close to me. A uh, surplus store? Yeah. Yeah. When I typed um, it in, it, it popped up on your over where you are. Yeah, I mean Boeing's all over the place. So, and I imagine it doesn't isn't even Boeing. If you're in California, there's probably a ton of them uh, over there as well. Um, so let me share my screen here. Maybe. <laughs> yeah sorry i'm looking uh, i'm looking um it's all i need is another um store this is a boeing co i don't know if that's the same place yeah um for some they don't say surplus screen is not so, working your share screen's not But yeah, so always oh, there we go. You got it? Yeah. Yep. Um so this is uh the door that I was kind of copying. Uh 
on it here. So if you if you look at it now, it's a raised panel door. I don't have that. Um, so I just want the recess panel. Uh, I did do a little bit of pink around the, the inside of the door. And uh, let's see if you can go back. I don't know if you can kind of see it there. It's, it's really tough to see. And so I actually I just might see have a little to bit back. of it. Yeah. Yeah. I might have to go back. It's darker down below. I didn't want to make it overwhelming, um, but I think I made it too underwhelming. So um, anyways, I'll have to redo that. But if you, if you look at the door, it's almost identical to what is in the, uh, in the photo here. Um, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, it <laughs> so, is. And I, I love that. That looks really great. Um, I'm really excited to see, see how that that's going to work out. Yeah. So, um, I, I had, I, uh, custom mix some of the paint, uh, for the airbrush. Um, but, uh, we can actually show, uh, unless you have something else to go over with electronics, we can actually show me putting that together. Um, so I have a couple different videos. One is actually the painting and one is actually, uh, we talked about uh, a couple weeks ago, adding the sanding sealer. Right. Uh, to the cache. So let's play that one real quick or to the, to MDF, uh, any, anything you want to use, if you can use particle board, anything like that, you want to want to sand or seal it if you can, uh, if you don't want to have the wood look to it, the wood grain, I would sand seal it as well and you can get rid of it. And as it says, always use a, a well ventilated or a respirator when you're doing this. I would do both. Yeah. I did some painting today and I took, of course, I have my door over here and I took it out there and painted. Non cash. Now, this is sped up. I'm not really that fast, guys. Oh, man. Now I'm disappointed, Chad. That was after my Red Bull, I guess. <laughs> So that's, that's really great. Um, I was looking back over here as we're doing this. Uh, Roma Cats, Doug says, uh, the, the super glue method is an Adam Savage idea. The baking soda solidifies the super glue as a catalyst and it's sandable. So that's actually a really good tip. Um, I like that. So that's it on that one. Um, hey, Bell on the Move says, maybe we can take a trip, uh, a field trip to the warehouse surplus after the gadget academy in memphis is there a warehouse surplus there in memphis is that, is that i true? don't know we can see i will see what, what kind of places we do i mean we can always do a field trip to harper freight um <laughs> <laughs> but well I'll, I'll i'll look i'll see what we have um i don't know if i want to find it i don't know if my <laughs> budget can afford me to not to find it i can't afford to fly all that stuff back I, yeah, I know. And I can't afford to ship it for you. Um, you just got to buy a house here, Chad. That's what you got to do. That's yeah. that's uh, settled. <laughs> My wife wants to. I know. But not I Memphis. Know. I know. Just two hours. Two hours. You said um, Nashville's two hours away? Two and a half? Just a little over two hours. Yeah. So wow, it's not that's bad. close. Yeah, it's real close. That'd be dangerous. But yeah, that'd be close. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, All right. so that was the sanding sealer. Sand it when you're done, paint it, prime it, ready to go. Um, and now we can actually go over the painting of the uh, of the uh, door itself. So one thing I'll have to say I learned uh, on this is I people who I have to learn to document and always have a camera rolling. And not all the way through this, I had it going. And it's the toughest thing for me to do, but I don't think people realize how much footage you actually have just to get a small, a, a small video. So it, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. It, it, it takes a little bit. <laughs> yeah. I completely understand. Always overshoot. So I was going to cut out the, uh, the flowers on my uh, vinyl plotter. And I thought, you know what? I have my laser cutter here. And I, this stuff here is like giant uh, masking tape. Uh, the pre pre mask, and so I thought, what if I just etch it? So uh, it's not even etched. I mean, uh, it's scored. So there's a setting on your Glowforge that you can score it. Uh, and so I'm just scoring the top of the the uh, pre mask, and I'm getting my uh, uh, templates that way to actually put in. Now these ones are square because I wanted to actually set them inside the whole panel. Okay. Um, the recessed panel there. So. Um, 
that's what I'm doing. So it's kind of tedious uh, to do. And at one point here, I end up, I didn't like the way I did one. I think I took it out. So I actually doubled up some uh, blue tape and cut it that way. But the blue tape was even worse. Uh, it wouldn't stay together. So um, right there, I actually folded over one of the ends of the flowers. I end up replacing that piece. Um, but it doesn't show it on here. And then you go back and as we get into the painting, are you airbrushing this or what? I mean, you'll... Yeah. So I'm airbrushing this because I didn't want to have a whole bunch of spray overspray and I didn't want it to be too thick. Uh, so airbrush is actually a really easy way to do it. Uh, the hard part was, and, and I can go over that when, when we get to the airbrushing part of it, uh, was the angle. So here we go. I have it all masked up. It's all ready to go. Um, now you have uh, two different color flowers uh, on here. Um, four of them, I think, are are the. Uh, I end up going with the uh, violet. Okay. On it. So, uh, but right here, it's when I'm doing it, and I have a lot of uh, lights above me. Um, right. It's shining. It looks like I was missing spots, so I kept hitting it and hitting it. Um, so next next time, I would do it. You know. When you when you make it don't do it underneath a lot of light so you would actually see okay. your coverage so it just looks shiny like i was missing a spot because you really don't need that much paint on there and if you see like with an airbrush you don't get a lot of overspray um so so i go back and hit it again because it looks like i missed some spots because of the light now you can't see the glare of the wet paint um from the top angle, but if you're at where I was standing, you can. Okay. So I end up right. making this whole video and putting it all up on, on YouTube. So now we're going to the second one. Now this was a custom color as, as well. Um, all it is is the lavender. Uh, I think it's one drop, drop or two drops of lavender with like eight drops of white. Um, right, and that's together. one thing with an airbrush. It doesn't take a lot of paint when you're doing. Um, an airbrush because no it, it, that light i had to do that much to get that light color um but that one little thing would have taken two drops of, of out of these little bottles to do so and now what i did was i wanted to do the circles the center of the daisies i think they're daisies um that are yellow um and i wasn't sure how to do that so what i ended up doing was i just cut some circles out of um, on here, plexiglass, so then I can see where I'm placing it because it's clear. Um, right. The one thing is on here, I use like uh, six millimeter plexiglass, just scrap. And it was hard to see in the coverage because you're hitting the side of the, it's so thick, you're hitting the side of the plexiglass. So you had to hit it in different angles to make sure you got the full circle. Um, and so, so the first one was a light pink on top of that flower and so that's why i did that first now i'm to the yellow um so anyways so i couldn't tell and because you're getting the shadowing and it's so thick a little bit tougher to do now when i do the bigger flower i actually went with a, a really thin uh i think i think it's a two mil uh piece of acrylic um that's really really flexible and so it actually didn't stick up at all and it covered real fast which you'll see so on here, this the airbrush dries very fast. Um, and so all I did on the uh, acrylic was scraped off the dried paint so I could actually see through there again. Yeah, if I took it right away and wiped it off with a wet cloth or something, you could it would be completely clean. Right. So there's three different size circles in here. There's three different size flowers I'm now using. So this is a really thin one um, that I cut and it actually covers really easy. So. I didn't want it any kind of overspray because so I'm not that still learning on the paintbrush, but you can see how quick that one covered and I was able to see there wasn't a lot of uh, shadowing or anything because it was so thin. Right. So, so you got two more of these. The last one. Last one. Last one? I thought you have you're gonna do have kept one white. No, it's a light pink. Oh that's it's the, the same color pink. as the flower up above, the lighter okay. flower. Um, it's just hard to see. Uh, it, it's so light, it's hard to tell. So there it is right there, all finished. Um, 
so that's what you see here. So now what we're going to do is I, I decided I wasn't going to, but I decided that I want to do the pink around the doors. Um, so what I did was I laser cut a couple pieces of square and I left them an eighth inch on each side of uh, so I could actually have that gap and set that in the middle. Uh, and so then I decided just to spray around it like this. Um, and so next time I'm going to go, I'll, I'll make those a little bit smaller because I want to redo that. But uh, pretty simple. I mean, it isn't, it isn't too hard. And then I use a laser cutter also to cut that template out of cardboard. Um, because I don't want to put any kind of tape over those other flowers because I'm afraid that you can kind of see on one of the, the flower leaves there that I got a little bit of tape on it yesterday and it kind of pulled it off a little bit. So, so anyways, you can see a little bit of pink around it upper one here um yeah i just like how that it's coming sure. together and it's just really and as doug is saying great tip to hit light uh, first coat and dry go back with heavier coats after that yeah so it's really great to do do that in there i uh, just love having seeing this how it's coming together um i like and honestly if you wanted to, you would may need to use the pre-mask for the flowers. You could just do a template out of cardboard or or something thin, thin vinyl or something that, um, and just set it over the top. The airbrush is so fine. Once you hit it, you'll just pull it away and it should be good. Now, it's going to be tougher to line everything back up if you have to go back over, but, you know, you don't have to right. use anything fancy like the Glowforge. I just happened to have it, so I thought I would use it. I mean, if you got the tool, use it, right? I mean... That's why I bought it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Adam Savage has a has a book called Everything's a Hammer. I haven't read it yet, but um, I've heard it's pretty good. Um, yeah. But still, if you have the correct tool, use it. So. Yeah. So hopefully this isn't too boring for people uh, here to see. But trying to, I can I can paint one live, you know. But this kind of shows you everything. Yeah, and. and how long did it actually take you to do all this? Do, do that painting, yeah. Oh, like uh, um, four or five hours. <laughs> see, and but we got to see. I'm it also in, learning, in and I'm like, minutes. okay, that didn't work. I got to redo it, you know? Right. And there's a lot of different detail that you can do with an airbrush, and those that are really skilled with an airbrush can do a phenomenal job. I mean, just look at some of the shirts that people have had airbrushed. Um, I've dabbled with it and that it, 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 it takes a lot of practice. I mean, there's, I've, I've seen photorealism stuff done in airbrush. It's, it's really, really cool. Um, so Andrew said I these, originally these light was, speed videos oh. are an awesome way to share a ton of great information and tips. So oh, great. they are. And, and Doug is Darren, sorry, is saying fant a fantastic artwork. That's where I fall down with my caches. So so kudos on you, Chad. Yeah. I mean, you're doing really good on those. It looks really great. So, so I did a, uh, originally I did a, a test one and that's my test flower here um, that I did. Um, and it turned out pretty good. I was very happy with it. So I was like, okay, looks good. Let's do it again. Um, it's a little bit lighter than in the coating uh, on the other ones, but it actually was really simple to do. Um, the airbrush makes a big difference. Now, if I was using rattle cans, I don't, it wouldn't have been that clean and probably wouldn't have taken that long. And I would have covered everything to make sure right. I wouldn't get any overspray. And when you say uh, rattle cans, you're talking about regular spray paint, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, okay. sorry. <laughs> I'm just, hey, just making sure that everybody understands the terminology. Rattle cans, because it has the ball inside of it, the marble that shakes up, so it rattles. So that's where that comes from. Uh, but just want to make sure everybody knows the terminology, because you may say something, I may say something, and if, and if they don't know the term, that's it. I mean, like tots. Yeah. Not everybody knows what tots when they first get started going in or FTF. All those, those tater tots. Tater tots. Oh, yeah. I might need to go to Sonic. It's the best kind of tots. <laughs> oh, they are. But yeah, so I had a lot of fun making that. That's that was fun learning uh, a new way. I mean, I I haven't used uh, an airbrush that way. So my original plan was, but I wanted to match the cash fairly close was to actually use the airbrush and use the template what time is it? um i was gonna say i could probably do one real quick but on the outside once you get the template on there 
which I think I might have a couple of extras. Um, no. uh, I was just going to airbrush around the edge, so it's a nice right. clean edge, but it would it would go uh, lighter towards the middle. Um, <laughs> um, so you'd have like a shadow, or you know, you'd have the darker pink on the outside. Sorry, I'm pointing. I'm looking at it. Darker on the outside, and then it would go lighter on the inside because I'm just hitting it uh, right, right on the edge or the line of the template. Um, and I thought that would look really cool, but then I, I kind of want to stick close to the uh, the picture for now. Um, which on the picture, I guess I'm looking at it, and you guys aren't. But uh, on I the can picture, add it. the same thing with the paint um, here. Uh, I don't know if you can. So I want yeah, the I'm silver sure. outside uh on it and the silver i end up picking i did not i don't like um uh, and i don't have the door all the way set yet that's going to be next time um anyways it's a silver on the outside the one i have here i don't like so i'm going to redo that um i like this do you like that mm -hmm. i do um, let us know what you think in the in the comments yeah. do you like the silver on the outside do you like the darker on the inside on the frame and then the silver the lighter silver uh, on the uh, the grab arm, so I guess what I don't know this because that's what they kind of grab the door when it dropped in place. Yeah, so. these here, so that would come up. That's where there's usually a a, hand, a bolt there or something that would come up and grab. Um, now I did remake the mount, which I'll have to. We'll go over that uh, when I come back um, as well. But uh, anyway, uh, I'm not going to do the control panel on this side. I'm just going to do. At least I don't plan to. I'll do the screen container on this side, finish up the box, put the light on it, and uh, doorknob, which the doorknob, my thought was, I don't know if I have one here, just a, a basic cabinet door knob. I don't know if I have any basic cabinet ones, but uh, I'll have to pick one up um, next time. Okay. I have lots of doorknobs, but not a basic one, but it looks right. like a mushroom. Just for your cabinet, just put it right there. I think it will it will turn out really good, um, and look fine. So we're getting close. We should be done with it. I'm out of town um, next, next week, week um, but and so I won't have a chance to work on it. But uh, right. I'll be back the week after. Right. So, and speaking of, because we're coming into wrapping in, we're going to start laying in this plane pretty quickly because you're going to need to be taken off on a plane here within a few days. But there's been kind of a change of plan for next week. We were going to be talking with Dave Wagner about the programming and everything, but he's not going to be able to be on. So we're trying to work something out to do something. It will just be me. Chad's going to be at Disney um, suffering. He's going to be looking at all the gingerbread and how we can do some other weathering on some other stuff. So um, <laughs> this is a working trip to Disney. That's what we're telling everybody. Is that what it is? Can't write off my taxes. That's what. That, that, it's a research trip. I need to do some of these research trips, like. Um, but yeah, so um, we're looking at trying. To, we're going to do something we don't have completely planned, completely out. Um, so we're going to kind of table this this build for next week, um, as we get into something else, and we're working that working what that's going to be. Um, so I'm going to have. We're working on trying to get a special co-host with me. Um, <laughs> so, um, <laughs> I just got a text from who we were thinking, um, you may be able to catch up with him too, Chad. Um, but, <laughs> um, but so we'll, uh, we're working on who's going to be the special co-host with me next week. And we'll be talking about some other caches. I may be building something in here. Um, so I don't know, we may be continuing on something that uh, from my live stream that I'm going to be doing on behind the cash uh, on Saturday. So it may be a crossover event um, between behind the cash and gadget talk, um, but we'll figure that out. We'll see what's going to happen. So, but um, yeah, if we're working on, like I said, different co-hosts that might be able to be on with me. So. We'll yeah. See. And then when we come back, finish this up, I got a couple other fun, quick you know, one episode builds. Uh, puzzles, little puzzles for gadgets. Uh, that would be fun to do. And then um, I have a really cool May the 4th cache to build. Oh. So. Um, mm, I can handle I am that. working on it. So, yeah. 
So it'll, it'll be fun, hopefully. Our 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 Russian friend. Yeah, guys back. On. I've already taken care of it. <laughs> <laughs> Usually they get on a little earlier, but they they t- took them fifty five minutes till they got oh, on. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so I, don't know. I, I get I in don't Saturday know. to California, and I'm hoping. My wife told me we have nothing planned Saturday, so we get in at nine a.m. I'm like, I might have to go find that uh, uh, lightsaber cache. I don't think it's too make, far. Make um, make sure you have a robe with you. I'll have to see what I have. Uh, you may have to wait until you go to Disney and have couple lightsabers for it uh one thing we didn't i didn't share and um just asked dare uh actually was it darren um the uh youtube channel oh sorry i'm looking here for that youtube channel or i can show that next week uh if you want to show it next week hey yeah i'll have it for for next week uh, listening maybe he wants to come on with you and just talk about it real quick yeah Uh, that was oz fox right uh, no, it was Darren Archer. It was it Darren? Okay. Yeah. So Darren, uh, message so, me. Yeah. Um, message me on Facebook, Instagram, or I mean, you can always, of course, always you can always message us on um, Gadget Talk Podcast uh, on Instagram. You can always do that, or email us at gadgettalkpodcast.com or you can find podcast at gmail dot com. Anyway, um, but yeah, you can get hold of us that way. Um, but yeah, Darren, if you want to come on for a little bit next week and let's talk about your, your cash that you, you got your the gadget cash that's taking quite a while to build, which is awesome. Nothing against that because these gadget caches take time to do them right, mm-hmm. debate the test them and make sure everything's right for when they're out in the field. So you don't have any disappointed cashers. Um, it takes time. So don't, don't feel bad that it's taking a lot of time to build it because a lot of times it stays here in the head and then trying to get it out there. Um, well, and I have art. I have a lot of stuff in my head I want to do, but I just don't have the time or sometimes the motivation. No, no, and I I understand that. That's 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 it is. I mean, I have. I'm trying to come up with different stuff all the time, and sometimes the builds that I do inspire something else. And then I'm like, okay, how can I do that and change it up? And then I'll start thinking about it and trying to come up with something completely not the same, but but not. And then. Of course, go do an escape room is always inspirational for me. Um, always helps. And did another one this weekend and got out again. So, uh, well, Bell in the move here uh, mentioned something about resin casting. Are you just wanting to know how to resin cast, or did you have something in particular you wanted resin casted? So, so that, make that, that, that comment could be a on possibility that. next week. I don't know. Maybe. Rumacats is the he does a lot of casting stuff. He would be he does be the man he does do a lot of casting. So we I don't know we'll we'll see who's going to be on with me next week. It's going to be a surprise. Um, but I can do resin, on just well. not casting it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, so we'll we'll figure it out. Um, so just kind of like I said, change the plans, and we'll then we'll jump back onto the screen canister um, when Chad gets back um, from. So. All right. Well, I want to thank everybody for being on with us. Um, so great show, Darren Sanger. Show, show's coming. Um, so thank you um, for that. Um, make sure that you hit the subscribe button if you have not subscribed, and be um, share the stream. Say, hey, this is a cool, cool way, of, and not necessarily always using doing gadgets, but some cool techniques that you can use on anything. I've used a lot. Of on things that I've, I'm doing on other stuff, not just building caches. It's a lot of fun. So, any um, any final words for tonight? No. Uh, no, I'll probably be watching next week. Um, maybe I'll jump on, depending on what I'm doing. We'll see. Yeah. We'll I'm see looking see forward to it. I mean, if you have to jump on with your cell phone just for a few minutes and talk to us, that'd be great. So, Scooby loves uh, poo. Thanks. Enjoy. And as always, GC. X11 said, full great show from my American friends. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much for joining in with us. Hit that like button. And Where is uh, GCD SK11 from? Canada or? I believe so, yes. Know? Yes, it's Canada. Our northern friends up there. So, but once again, want to thank everybody for joining us tonight. And I will see you next week. Chad won't necessarily, maybe. We don't know. We'll see.
<laughs> but we'll I we'll see you next week, Canada. So yeah. All right, everyone. Good night. All right. Good night, everybody. <laughs>